chefs. Now we're on to the stage where we're getting ready to make the stock from the John Dory bones. Um, one thing to remember in relation to the actual uh, stock itself is to make sure that you actually remove the eyes from the, the fish. Um, what happens is what happens is as well is that basically when the eyes are in the stock, you can see here what you have is a situation where if they burst, they will first of all discolor the stock. Remember what we want from a fish stock is a white stock. Um, and they will discolor the stock and also they will taint the stock as well in relation to making it slightly bitter. So we need to make sure that um, the eyes are actually removed when we're using the heads, okay? Now the next thing to remember in relation to um, using the heads is that we have, you saw me remove the blood from the spine, you saw me remove the sack when we were doing the filleting. Now it's also to make sure that the heads have also got the blood washed out of them as well. Um, again, that's only going to discolor the stock and we don't want that. So um, that's what we have in relation to the, the stock. As you can see, we have our bones ready. We've got our basics for the stock, which is we're going to be using leek, the white of the leek. We're going to be using some mushroom trimmings. We're going to be using some black peppercorns. We're going to be using some onion, a couple of slices of lemon, and we're going to be using a bouquet garni. Uh, when we put all this together and we bring it and we're about ready to add in our cold water to the stock, we bring it back then. Okay, um, thanks, Jeff. Make our fish stock now. Um, what you see here at the moment is our fresh naked potato soup. We have a function on this evening for 200 people, so um, we're making a fresh pot of fresh leek potato soup. Uh, another day, we'll take you through the how to make a fresh soup from start to finish, um, and possibly this one here, leek and potato. Anyway, back to what we're doing here. Now, what I want to do is, I have, I'm dropping in some butter here into a, uh, as you can see, and you can hear the knives going on in the background, guys. But as we're all well aware, this is a live working kitchen, so just bear with us. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in We're making our fish stock, right? So what we have here is sliced onions, sliced mushrooms, and sliced uh, leek, okay? Now guys, we only want the white of the leek, all right? Remember that, the whole point of this is to keep, this is a white stock, so um, we wanna make sure that we keep the white part of the leek, because if we go up and start using the green part, what it, all it's going to do is basically make our stock bitter. So what I want to do is just melt down this butter, get these in, get them softening out. When they're in, and when they're when they're going to sweat off, um, I'm going to then add in the fish, the actual bone themselves, and begin the cooking process in relation to the stock. So, anyway, here we go. So anyway, mushrooms in, all right? Onions in, leek in. Can I ask you a question again? Yeah. You put in the, the harder vegetables first and put in the softer vegetables last. Is that the way how it goes? No, not really. Basically, the, what we have here is we're just looking, we're not looking to cook out these vegetables at all uh, as we start off. All we're doing here is what's called sweating eye, right? which is basically where we want to begin the cooking process of where the vegetable, the, the, this is the base mirepoix, this is the base veg for the stock. Um, we just want this to begin to render down and sweat slightly so that the actual it's it, their own natural juices begin to come out to help the cooking process along before we actually add in the rest of the fish uh, fish bones. Now the other thing to remember, chefs, is that we use um, cold water for this fish stock. All right, process from start to finish in relation to cooking the stock is approximately 45 minutes. Um, we bring the stock to the boil. When the stock comes to the boil, we take, we scum it, and then we actually reduce the heat down and let the stock just simmer away. Now, you can see here that these vegetables have started to turn white. Now it's time to add in the fish bones. 
Now, as I said before as well, in relation to the stock, right? Remember to actually clean. If you're going to use the John Dory heads, remove the eyes and make sure that the, that the blood has been cleaned out of the back of it, okay? The back of the head. So these are going in here now. I have bones in here, all right? Now, the next thing that I want to add into this is um, a glass of white wine. For that, our bouquet garni is going in, all right? Four slices of lemon. About 20 peppercorns. Our glass of white wine is going in. And now we're adding in our cold water. Now what we want to make out of this is about a litre of stock, okay? So that's about a litre there. Um, we want to just cook that down now. So the first thing, as I said, what we're going to do so actually bring this up to the boil and then begin to reduce it down once we've strained it and passed it. So we've got the full heat on now. Now don't forget guys, use a lid, all right? Remember that by adding a lid to when you're actually cooking, you're gonna reduce your waiting time down for boiling for around about by a third, okay? So you're saving cooking time and you're also being more green and friendly to, to, to the planet. Chefs, okay, now what I want to show you now is um, a beurre manier. Now, um, I have around about uh, a quarter pound of butter in here, okay? Um, we've just melted the butter down, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add in some white flour, ordinary white flour, and this is the equivalent of a roux, okay? A roux is a cooked, is a cooked thickening agent, yeah, that we also use butter and flour with. Um, but with this one, this is uncooked. The butter is softened, it's not cooked. The flour is raw, it's not cooked, okay? So what I'm looking for here now in relation to this is being able to, um, I'm not gonna add in this, all of this flour because I'm looking for a certain consistency. So I just wanna mix X amount of it around. And if you can see that there. I'm just going to add in a little bit more flour into this. Now what we do with this is basically once we have this um, mixed together and blended together, okay, we add it in as a thickening agent into our sauces that we're going to use. This a Bourmanier is mostly used for um, thickening sauces. And you need a hell of a chunk of bourmagne if you're going to actually thicken a pot of soup with this, all right? That's why in a soup we actually use a roux as a base in relation to starting off thickening agents for a soup. But as I said to you, a bourmagne is mostly used for, as a thickening agent for sauces. Now you can see the consistency that I have here, okay? Even that is a um, still a little bit wet. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get a little bit more flour and add it in. When I have that, I'll bring you back and show you exactly what a bourmagne should look like when it's finished. Okay, chefs, now as you can see, our bourmagne is still a little bit too wet. So what I'm doing is I'm adding more flour in. Now at this stage, I don't want to add in too much. What um, I'm looking to show you here is consistency. The, what the consistency of the bourmagne should look like once it's been blended. And what we're looking for is, we're looking for a shine of, to be had on the flour itself. Okay, you can see a shine just there. Now, also as well, um, we're looking not to see any of the butter that has been put in here, okay? So now we're just about finished, we're just about there. I would say that's probably going to be it. Once we mix this in, Now, when you also 
add your poor manier <clears throat> and thicken your sauce, remember you need to allow time to cook the flour out, okay? Otherwise, what's going to happen is, is your sauce is just going to taste of flour, all right? Now, as you can see here, there we have, it's more like a pastry dough. Um, now, this, when you're adding it in to a sauce, you take off a small piece, you whisk it in. You don't just grab a whole handful and drop it in. You know, you basically, if you're working on the, on the sauce corner, what you're going to do is be, you potentially could be adding, thickening small quantities of sauce in relation to that, that day's menu. Um, so basically what you need to do, as I said, is get your bourmanier to that stage, let it cool before you begin to use it. Um, don't use it when it's boiling hot. Uh, let it cool down to room temperature. And as I said, when you're adding it in, add it in bit by bit. Even that, don't add the whole lot in at one time. Chef, one question, can you freeze that and use it for later? Yes, or? you can freeze Bourmanier perfectly and you can t literally portion it out. Say for example, we knew that this amount of Bourmanier was going to last us one day in the kitchen. What we can do is we can create a, large, a larger lot of Bourmanier, portion it out into that and freeze it and then take it out day by day as we need it. Thanks, Thanks chefs. Chef. Talk to you soon.